If you're looking for an easy knit baby blanket project that combines loads of texture with a built in edge and is still beginner friendly, then the In Fours baby blanket is one for you. I've designed this blanket so that it has these lovely modern diagonal lines across it with a built in garter stitch edge. And the best part of all is it's all worked in either knit or pearl stitches. So it is really, really nice and beginner friendly, but it's also a great mindless project for those of you like me who want something Thing to knit to relax with in the evening and you're not necessarily looking for something that's going to be too complicated to work when you're trying to just knit and relax on those evenings when you're watching the telly. I called this blanket the in fours baby blanket because when I'm knitting up the middle section of it I found myself constantly counting to four so it seemed like an obvious choice. To knit this blanket you are going to need about 400 grams of double knit yarn, some four millimeter circular needles, straight needles won't be long enough so you will need to use cable needles, 100 centimeters, 80 centimeters, something like that will be more than enough. You're also going to ideally need two stitch markers and you're going to need a tapestry needle and and some scissors to salt those ends out once you're done. So without further ado, grab some yarn, grab some needles and let's get knitting. Before we start, I just want to talk you through the pattern multiples for this blanket. The pattern multiple for the middle section for your diagonal stripes is eight plus four. So you want to cast on in multiples of eight and then add an extra four stitches. Then for the edge, I have mine eight garter bumps wide plus one selvage stitch at the end to get these nice neat edges. So if you want to make this blanket in particular, you want to cast on a total of 134 stitches. If you are casting on a different size, you want to first cast on your middle section in sets of eight plus four, and then when you've done that, you want to cast on another 18 stitches, and that will give you your nine stitches that make up the side border. I'm just going to knit up a small sample for this tutorial, but you can cast on whatever size you want. As I'm making a small sample today, I'm going to cast on a total of 36 stitches for the middle section of the blanket, and then I'm going to add 18 stitches for my side garter borders. That makes a total of 54 stitches. If you're wanting to make the exact same size blanket that I had in the intro, which is a nice baby size blanket, about 65 by 80 centimetres, then I've written up the pattern for you on my blog and I'll pop the link in the description below. So go ahead, cast on however many stitches you like. For this blanket, I really like to use the long tail method because I think it gives a really nice looking bottom edge. And I will meet you back once we have cast on our stitches for this project. First things first, we want to work our bottom garter edge. And because we are having eight stitches wide either side, ideally you want your bottom edge to reflect that and to be eight garter bumps deep. So you need to knit 16 rows for the bottom of your blanket. For me, this nice smooth edge of the cast on that faces you after you've finished casting on is what I consider to be the right side. So this is the side from now on that I'll refer to as the right side. So the first 16 rows you want to work as follows. Start by turning your work and the first row we work is a wrong side row and you want to knit until you have one stitch remaining on your left hand needle. So knit all the way across. And this is how we're going to work the first 16 rows. When you have one stitch left on your left hand needle, you don't want to knit this stitch. You want to slip it pearl wise with the yarn in front. That means you want to pop your right hand needle behind your working yarn so it brings it to the front of your work. And then you want to slip the last stitch as if you were going to purl. And you want to repeat that for 15 more rows. Exactly the same thing. Knit until you have one stitch left on your left hand needle and then slip that stitch purlwise with the yarn in front. You should finish your 16 rows with the wrong side of your work facing you. So the first row of our middle section repeat is a wrong side row. You can tell when it's the wrong side because you will have your yarn tail from your cast on at the same end that you are about to start your work on. The pattern repeat for the main section of the blanket is 16 rows, but don't let that put you off. It is a nice 
easy pattern repeat and once you get into the flow of it you almost don't have to count your rows you can roughly work out which row repeat you are on by the stitch count that you are working. I do recommend at this point that you have two stitch markers on hand and we're going to pop them nine stitches in and nine stitches before the end and that marks our side edges and it just means that you don't have to count quite as many stitches at the beginning and end of your row. So row one, you want to knit the first nine stitches. Once you've knitted nine stitches, you want to grab a stitch marker and pop it onto your right hand needle just to mark the point where our side garter stitch border ends. Now we want to work until 13 stitches before the end and you want to work purl four, knit four until there are 13 stitches left on your left hand needle. When you have 13 stitches left on this left hand needle, you should have just finished a knit four and you want to work a final purl four. And pop a second stitch marker onto that right hand needle that marks the opposite end of your side edge. Then we want to go ahead and knit eight. And just like with the other rows we've been knitting, we want to slip the last stitch purl wise with the yarn in front. So you want to pop your yarn to the front of your work. I do it by scooping up the working yarn with my right hand needle. Slip that stitch from the left needle to the right needle as if you were going to purl and then pop the yarn to the front of your work before you turn. Row two and every even row, so every right side row, you are going to knit until the final stitch and then you are going to slip that stitch purl wise with the yarn in front. Make sure you slip your stitch markers as you go so that you keep them in the same place. So we are just going to go ahead and knit every single stitch all the way along. And this is the case for every even row that we work. Row three, you want to knit the nine stitches until the stitch marker. Slip the stitch marker from your left needle to your right needle and then for the middle section you are going to first purl three and then you are going to work knit four, purl four until one stitch before the second stitch marker. For the last stitch before the stitch marker you want to knit that stitch so it should fall after a purl four so the knit stitch should come naturally within the pattern then you want to slip the stitch marker knit the next eight stitches and then for the last stitch we're going to slip that purl wise with the yarn in front. For row four we are once again going to knit every single stitch until the final stitch and that final stitch you're going to slip purl wise with the yarn in front. The even rows are nice and easy. Don't forget to slip these stitch markers as you go to keep them in the right place on your work. For row five you want to start by knitting the first nine stitches. Slip the stitch marker and then for the middle part of our pattern, you want to start by purling the first two stitches. And then you are going to work knit four, purl four, until two stitches before the stitch marker. When you have two stitches left, these should hopefully fall after a purl four, so they should remain in pattern. You should never have a block of more than four stitches in one go in either purl or knit. So it, these stitches should always fall naturally in pattern. You're just not working four stitches in total. So the last two stitches before the marker on row five should be two knit stitches. You want to slip that marker and then knit eight 
and slip that last stitch purl wise with the yarn in front. So it's knit eight and then the ninth stitch we slip purl wise with the yarn in front. Row six is a nice one again. You just want to go ahead and knit all the stitches all the way along, slipping the markers as you go and slipping that last stitch purl wise with the yarn in front. Row seven, you want to knit until the stitch marker. Slip the stitch marker over and then for the middle section you want to purl one and then work knit four, purl four until three stitches before the second stitch marker. You want to knit the last three stitches before the stitch marker and they should fall after a purl four so they should fall in pattern. Slip the stitch marker and knit until the final stitch and then slip that final stitch purlwise with the yarn in front. Row 8, knit all the way across, slip those stitch markers as you go and finish with the last stitch slipping it purlwise with the yarn in front. Row 9, you want to knit the first 9 stitches. Slip the marker and for the middle section you want to work knit four, purl four until four stitches before the marker. The last four stitches before the marker are knitted so they are knit four and once again they fall in pattern. Then you want to slip the marker, knit eight stitches after the marker and then slip the last stitch purl wise with the yarn in front. Row 10, by now you should be really familiar with our even numbered rows, we're just going to knit all the way across, slipping those markers and then slipping the final stitch purlwise with the yarn in front. Row 11, you want to knit the 9 stitches up to the marker. Slip the marker. And then the middle section, you want to start off by knitting three. And then you want to work purl four, knit four, until one stitch before the marker. Like every other row, the last stitch should fall in pattern. So you should have knitted four and be left with one stitch. And then you want to purl that last stitch before the marker. Slip the marker across from your left to your right needle and knit the next eight stitches and then when you get to the final stitch you're going to slip that purl wise with the yarn in front. Row 12, knit all the way across, slip in those markers and don't forget to slip that final stitch purl wise with the yarn in front. Row 13, you want to knit the nine stitches until the stitch marker and then slip that stitch marker over from the left needle to the right needle. Then we start the middle section of our row with a knit two and then you want to work purl four knit four until two stitches before the stitch marker. The last two stitches before the marker are purl stitches and as long as you've worked your pattern repeat correctly they should follow immediately after four knit stitches. Slip that marker over, knit until one stitch before the end of the row and then slip the final stitch purlwise with the yarn in front. Row 14 is a rinse and repeat of every other even row. We're going to knit all the way across and we're going to slip the last stitch purlwise with the yarn in front. Row 15, knit the first nine stitches. slip the marker over and then we are going to work knit one so we're just going to knit the first stitch after the marker and then you're going to work purl four knit four all the way across until three stitches before your stitch marker. 
The last three stitches, as always, should fall in pattern. So I've just worked a knit four here. And then the last three stitches before the marker, we are going to purl. You want to slip the marker across, knit the next eight stitches. And slip that last stitch purlwise with the yarn in front. By row 16, you should be really familiar with how our even numbered rows work. And we are going to knit all the way across, slipping those markers as we go. And remembering to slip that final stitch purlwise with the yarn in front to get our nice clean edge along the sides of our blanket. So that's our 16 row pattern repeat. Once you get into the meat of the blanket, you will find that the 4321 at the beginning of the middle section and the 1234 at the end of the middle section becomes quite intuitive. So you will find yourself just counting these first stitches and then working knit four, purl four or purl four, knit four all the way across and just work in pattern until you get to the next stitch marker. So once you've familiarized yourself, you can just know what pattern repeat you are working between the two stitch markers. I, for my baby size blanket, repeated my set of 16 rows 16 times. So if you're making the same blanket as me, you would now go and repeat these 16 rows another 15 times. When you count your pattern repeats, you can count from the top of your final row. So if you count the garter stripes along the left hand edge, that will give you how many pattern repeats that you've got. To finish your blanket off, you want to have worked a full 16 row repeat like we have here. You should be just about to work a wrong side row and to make sure that your blanket matches top and bottom, you want to work one more row one after you've finished your however many pattern repeats you've chosen to do. So row one, we want to knit the first nine stitches. You can remove the stitch marker at this point because we are finishing off the blanket. You would only work this row when you have finished your sets of 16 rows and you're ready to work the top garter stitch edge. So we can get rid of the marker because we don't need that anymore. And then you want to work purl four, knit four all the way across and keep repeating purl four, knit four until you get to the second stitch marker. You should end on a purl four. If you've counted your stitches correctly, you should hit your marker after a purl four. And then you can remove that marker because we no longer need that because we're about to work the edge. And then you want to knit the next eight stitches. And for the final stitch, pop your yarn in front and slip it purlwise. By working that extra row one, it leaves you with an identical top and bottom so it really is worth counting your stitches so that you do finish in pattern because it does make the blanket look so much better and much more seamless what we now need to do is to create our top garter stitch edge so you just want to go away and you want to knit 16 rows of garter stitch make sure you slip your last stitch on each row purlwise with the yarn in front of you and the reason we do this is because it gives us this really lovely neat side edge so go away now and knit 16 rows of garter stitch to work your edging. And after 16 rows, come back and I will show you how we pop the finishing touch and cast off this project and get it off our needles and looking like a finished project. After 16 rows, your top edge should look like this. You should have eight garter ridges and you should be just about to start a right side row. So you should have the matching eight garter ridges at the top as you do at the bottom and at the sides. So your border should be really nice and symmetrical all the way around. To finish off, we want to cast off with the right side facing us to get a matching little ridge at the top as we have at the bottom and actually as we have at the sides with those slipped stitches. I'm not going to dwell too long on the cast off. I have a separate video that talks you through the cast off in really slow beginner friendly steps. So if you want some help with the cast off, I'll link the video up above here and you can go and take a look at that before you cast off your blanket. But for those of you that have cast off before, we are going to work a basic knitted cast off, which is knitting the first two stitches, lifting the first stitch over the second stitch 
and then knitting another one and repeating that process. So you should never have more than two stitches on your right hand needle. If you do, then you've knitted too many and you just want to make sure that you are lifting each stitch over its left hand side partner. So we're going to knit and lift all the way across until we have cast off all our stitches. Once you've worked all the way along and you have one stitch left on your needle, you want to break your yarn and pull your loop slightly bigger and then remove your knitting needles. You don't need those anymore. And then how I like to secure my tail before I sew it in is I grab the end of the tail and pull it through the larger loop that I've just made. And then I pull it nice and tight. And you will have then finished your project and got it nicely off your needles and all that you have left to do is to sew in your tails. And that's how you knit the In Fours baby blanket. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, I'd love it if you'd give it a thumbs up. And if, like me, you've caught the knitted blanket bug, then why not take a look at this video that's on screen now? I think you're going to like it as much as this blanket here. So that's all from me for today and I'll see you again for another tutorial soon. Bye!